Pass record. Pass record. You're on. Okay, well, welcome to another Social Time TV on Blab. Well, this is kind of interesting. We usually do this on Google Hangouts, everyone. Uh, this is Greg Boria, aka Social Gray, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network with my co host. Social Media Sean, Sean Charles. How are you doing, buddy? Good, man. Live from Vancouver, right, Sean? Sure, just across the water a little bit in Victoria, but close enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm live from San Francisco. So anyway, uh, how's it going? How's everything going today? <laughs> it's going awesome. You know, uh, what has it been? I guess only 20 or 30 minutes. This is our first, uh, you know, time setting up a lab. As you mentioned, we usually do hangouts. And um, it's been fun getting to know the new platform and, uh, um, you know, the pros and cons. But, you know, learning as you go is kind of how, how we do things these days. Hey, bud? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's kind of cool setting it up and, you know, getting used to, non-hangouts this is kind of interesting right so we already discovered some things right sean we did yeah i mean the thing is is that i there's so many neat things about it. it what you notice first though is the things that um aren't quite the same so you know being able to control individual volumes for people's you know volume levels when you have multiple people for us it's not too bad because our audio is pretty in sync i think you know we'll find in the recording um, and just little things, quality things, you know, the things that Hangouts didn't have when they first started that they added is kind of what it feels like. Um, but those are just the things it doesn't have. There's lots of other advantages that that uh, about Blab, but um, those would be some of the things that come to mind. Yeah, I think um, I like Blab's simplicity. Um, you know, now I, I didn't, you know, because I use two cameras on my Mac um, and it, it defaults to FaceTime. So, right, we had to kind of go into the settings of uh, Chrome and set up the default cam a little bit differently. And then, you know, when you unplug it, then it'll go back to your FaceTime uh, camera on your Mac, MacBook. But um, I thought that was a little bit weird in in in. In Hangouts, you label you could change it on the fly. So if you change the settings in Chrome, the downfall is you have to reboot Chrome again. Right, so, right. So, but that's not an issue once you set it up. But you know that that was kind of interesting trying to uh, go past that. I mean, you had to boot again, you boot up Chrome again. Sure. I had to boot up Chrome again. Well, that's um, a good side me. note though for settings wise. If you are trying to figure out, you know, and you're using Blab, uh, the settings are actually in the Chrome browser under settings versus in the actual app itself like it is that's in right. so if that's you are right. trying to switch cameras or microphones that's where it is in case you didn't know for all I you know. people that's out cool. there no it's good I, I think um in general i'm excited to use this uh platform just to just to give it like i said give it a shot and and yeah sean convinced me to do this because he felt that uh, this has the periscope periscope uh meerkat like um feel to it right so sure um, and he says that we'll be able to connect with a lot more people this way. Uh, yeah, five, five so far. That's pretty good. Well, Hangouts has been tough that way, right? For replays, it's great because of the quality, yeah. but the live well, community. It, and it goes to YouTube. And it goes to YouTube, which is nice, yeah. Yeah, so it goes to your YouTube channel. So if you're on Google Plus Hangouts on air, that'll go directly to your your YouTube channel that you're 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 on, and then you could – you know, then take everything, you know, right for the blog post or leave it up there just for posterity or whatever you want to do. So right, right. I think that's, I think that's part of the, part of the interesting thing. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah. So well, anyway, let's, let's go on with what we normally do, what we normally sure. do on Hangouts. So, so anyway, uh, what we do here is we cover social media, um, news, social media week, things that Sean and I think are interesting. And we use the hashtag social time TV and, what we like to do is, um, what we're hoping to do on Blab here is try to get some interaction, which we did, as Sean pointed out earlier, we didn't get on Hangouts, right? It was all post views and everything else. So um, we had a few of our, you know, of our inner circle diehards, of course, which are great, you know, friends and and close tweets and stuff. But uh, it's just a neat way to co collaborate and to get the community involved. And whether that's in real time or after the fact, um, you know, through replays, which Blab seems to be really good for as well, uh, we shall see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Well, well, do you know much about Blab? I mean, uh, the, the origins and, you know, who these guys are who started Blab? 
you know, um, I've had a chance to sit in on some of their updates and their community blabs, which are really cool. I don't know a lot about them, but that would be a great topic for one of our upcoming shows. Yeah. So let's do that. So let's go, let's go right into it here. So Google Hangouts, uh, it should be worried, right? Cause Slack is adding video, right? Um, I don't know. Should they be worried? <laughs> well, like you were saying, so, you know, I guess it's interesting to put the question to, you know, people out there is how you use Google Hangouts. It, Cause it's not just for live, you know, you have the live part of it here, but you also have the one-on-one -on -one, and then there's the texting and even the calling, right, Greg, especially on Android has been forever like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had some things that tripped up there because um, sometimes it would ring my phone and, you know, <laughs> we, we live a multi-screen life, right? So sometimes it'll ring my phone and out my laptop. I mean, you know, so I'd have to turn off my phone so I could to make, basically use my laptop with Hangouts. So yeah, look, it, it has some things going, you know, multi-screen isn't always a benefit when you're doing certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So. Well, so it looks like Slack's right. really trying to capture, or they have, you know, for the corporate setting and for collaboration. And so now if you don't have to use another, uh, whether it be Hangouts or Skype or what, whatever uh, your preferred uh, platform is, and you can have it right integrated with Skype and it work, or with Slack and it works well. Um, yeah, I mean, they could definitely cut into some of the usage, whether it'll happen overnight, probably not, but it's, it's something of interest for sure. Yeah, you know, I, I use Slack on, um, you know, a couple projects that I, I collaborate on and it's kind of neat that it'll integrate Google docs in. So you could actually share a Google doc in Slack because it'll allow a plugin to kind of come on. Um, Slack I find is just, it, it's kind of like, um, uh, base camp, you know, it allows you to share some, you know, files, big files, stuff like that. Um, but I, I, you know, it just like what I think Basecamp is not good is it hasn't added any audio or video. And that's what Slack's trying to do is, is add All that one place. element. Yeah. Because you know, they know a lot of their, their user base are developers are, are people working on projects that you know, the video, video chat and, and audio chat function is, is a must. Right. Right. Um, you have to go off channel, like to hangouts or, or Skype or, you know, um, I don't know too many people use Skype anymore. Quite frankly, I, I, Are you I know using I don't it at use all, it at much. All? Only when I'm for when I'm only when my friend says, "Can we get on Skype?" You know, otherwise I don't use it at all. I, I mean, uh, socially, a lot of my friends are Asian Japanese, so they're using Line um, a lot for messaging. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, Slack is really the one you want to use for, I think, um, development uh, projects. Uh, uh, Google, I think Google Hangouts still has its uh, kind of neat kind of niche uh, in terms of just uh, collaborating generally with a group of people. Um, so, I mean, Blab has that possibility too, if you think about it, right? Uh, any tool that allows you to bring in multiple people to collaborate, you know, has that potential, right? Totally. In, yeah. in a work environment, right? So, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's that's just my two cents from um, you know, project development standpoint. Um, you know, what they say here in this article is interesting because they said that, uh, you know, by adding this, Slack could conceivably displace, you know, Google, but they're also, because it also has a lot of third-party features, you know, and, um, but they also said so could Skype. So Skype has the ability to try to do that, which, you know, <laughs> Um, do they have a web live version yet for Skype? I heard they were talking about something like this or like a Google Hangout where you could broadcast I, live your, your Skype call. I, I don't know. Maybe people out there do know that because uh, I don't use it anymore as much. I, I don't keep up with a lot of the features, um, but uh, I don't know if Microsoft has done that yet. They they have. You're right. They've talked about it for years, actually, ever since Google um, Google Hangouts came out in, what, 2013, something like that? Uh, sure, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an eleven, thirteen. I don't know. Um, so, uh, but you know, uh, I mean, we shall see when it comes to that. But uh, oh well, we all uh, we all slacked out here. You want to go to the next uh, one? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Facebook Messenger integrates with Spotify. That's kind of neat. You can share songs via uh, Facebook Messenger. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So a quick update on Messenger. Are you, I mean, we use it quite a bit. Do you use it with uh, other people quite a bit? I use it a yeah, lot. Yeah, actually, uh, it's funny you said, we said about collaboration. So it'll, it, this is like the collaboration, social collaboration show, right? Sure. Um, uh, I, on a couple so because um, I'm working on like some of the projects like the uh, Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival, we've created uh, um, groups. And now now the ability to, you know, uh, name certain chats in your window and re rename them, you know, instead of the names, it'll, you can rename them as like uh, Social Time TV or Social Media Sean or whatever. Um, it, it's, it, it's become a collab- collaboration tool, believe it or not, for me. Um, Facebook Messenger. Yeah, um, and you know, sending files is easy, you know, or images. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now it is limited to twenty five megabyte, um, so you can't send videos or large videos um, on Facebook right. Messenger. So we, so. we wouldn't use it for that, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah, no. Yeah, so, yeah. so that that's where you know tools like Slack and and Basecamp have an advantage at at an enterprise level. You could share um, major files, right? Or right. have the ability have the ability to. I'm sorry, you you don't have the automatic ability, but you have the ability to. So, so jumping so, back to um, to Messenger, then yeah. uh, it is a really popular you know platform. So this is just a way now with Spotify is I think one of the and it sounds like there's going to be some more integrations as well, but it's just a way for um, for people to be social around their music, which is what it's always, they've always tried to do. Uh, do you remember ping the attempt that, uh, iTunes, Apple had, um, uh, it was called ping and that was their music social mm-hmm. network. It never really went anywhere at all. Um, but that's, you know, whether it be movies or TV or articles, it's all about, uh, social media is all about coming together around content right and then enjoying that content or discussing that content or what have you and so i think messenger um facebook messenger is making some moves uh it's getting easier to message brands and for brands to message i think as long as you've left a comment on my page then i can direct message you uh through facebook messenger uh so that's huge so i can get that direct like a dm on twitter i can do that on um, facebook traditionally you had to message me first. So if I was the brand on Facebook, I couldn't direct message you unless you message me first. And so that's, well, uh, you know, that's a neat thing. Yeah. I have a question. Cause the article actually asked this question. Uh, would you start sharing music from Spotify with your friends via Facebook messenger, or would you rather do it on your homepage? Well, if it's just a select group, a small group for messenger or a buddy or someone, I just want to share a song with, I think that, uh, especially for me, cause I use Facebook mostly professionally. I don't post a ton of, you know, silly stuff or, you know, cats or dogs, but I do, you know, I don't forget them. I don't leave them out altogether. Let's not be cruel. <laughs> um, so I might not want to post all my Spotify songs, but, um, if I'm like, Hey, Greg, remember we were talking about the song or whatever, and maybe send it off to you. And then it's a rich link. So I, cause obviously I could have sent it to you before, but what's the difference now? It's, it's. I can, when I click on that link, something different happens maybe. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I, I, I've only shared files, so I haven't tried this new, new feature yet, or I, I don't even know if it's active. You know, the oh, problem okay. is it, it only, it only, it only gets active when um, certain things happen. Right. So I'm not sure exactly. Um, oh, thanks for the link. Yeah. Is, the, is that, that's this link? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, oh interesting. Okay, oh, I'll weird. take it out my. And I had the, oh, uh, I had the. So whole, that's interesting. I put yeah, some text doesn't... before it, but the text disappeared. So that's an interesting thing in Blav here. You know, we at we the first one you did it added text. The second yeah, one you did. It's, it I don't know where, it's, where it went. Hmm. Spotify now appears as an option when users composing messages click the more menu and users who select are taken to the Spotify app where they can search for something to share. Users who receive Spotify content from their friends can simply click on the thumbnail to open Spotify on their device and listen to the song, artist, or playlist that was shared with them whenever the heck they want. 
Okay. So that makes yeah. sense. So yeah, so it's just a lot richer experience. It's not going to some, uh, uh, and I, you know, this kind of has to do with deep linking because let's we're probably we're thinking kind of mobile here, right? Mobile messenger on your phone is that traditionally, mm-hmm. if I were to uh, send you a link um, by email or by uh, text message, when you click to it, it'll go to the browser. Whereas now, you know how it gives you that option to open in app. Right, they, right. I believe that's what they call deep linking. And so what that means is that it will open in the app instead of just going to your your browser. And so same with Spotify is what they've added now. It sounds like it's deep linking. So when I click on that song you send me, instead of trying to open up in the browser, it'll open up in the Spotify app. And I can enjoy the lovely uh, art you've shared with me. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I was, you know, I was just uh, while you were doing that, I was just looking at uh, Facebook Messenger and looking at what's down there. You have the camera, you have the smiley face, you have gifts, which you know is a sticker, right? You know, gift or sticker. Then you have send money. I didn't even know the send money thing. There's a whole you know? right. What about that? That's another thing Messenger added was about sending money right through Messenger. Let's click that. Send money to anyone. Okay, here we go. This yes. is Greg, this is how we get. This is how we get engagement. Who wants money? Yeah. Who wants Greg to send the money? Come on, like, whoa! This oh is an Two things. So, um, um, what's your Facebook yeah. profile, and how much money? And how much money do you want? Right. So, let's go. Yeah, that's like split dinner, pay rent, it says, or anything else. So, oh, really? What? Oh, it's great. it's free to send and receive money. And here's the other one. Industry leading security, password protection, anti-fraud team, and more. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting when they sell you on that bullet point. Anti-fraud team. They include a a uh, the anonymous anti-fraud team. <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. Yeah. 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 Anyone from anonymous could uh protect us. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um and then send money from your debit card to their debit card. Wow. Interesting. Encrypted and private, it says. Okay, I'm gonna click click next. Ugh. Well, let's just do a test, Greg. Why don't you just? I don't know. No, I'm a, send, a thousand. Yeah, bucks. No, let's I, do I, a thousand. So every, Keep it small. Every, everything's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every, well, I'm doing social media, Sean, right now, so I'm not doing anyone else. Okay. So you're the only gonna be the only benefit oh, of whatever okay. I give you. Um. So it says pay and request. So I can I can request money from you. I'm ready. <laughs> I think I'll do that. I'll request money from Sean. I want a thousand bucks for this dude. Um, anyway, um, so sh- it says Sean isn't able to receive money right now. <laughs> Why? I, I'm worthy. Well, let's let's learn more. Okay, we're learning more. Okay. How how do I know if I can send or receive money in Messenger? There we go. One, you have to live in the United States. Uh, okay. Well, that, that that's that Sean does not live in the United States. So for all those good uh, people out there, we should clarify that we're we, although Greg and I do live technically in separate countries, we've been able to find some common ground to participate in social time TV. So this is this has been a great a great thing for both of our countries. <laughs> yeah, more Canada than the United States, though I think. And did you notice this when you tweeted it? It allows me to share the last 30 seconds. So I'm just about to tweet out um, that we're talking about Facebook payments and I'll use the hashtag social time TV. So if anyone's seeing this uh, in the replay mode, they can just search the hashtag. But now I share it now really easily to Twitter and it does a, a Twitter video. So it's uploaded directly to Twitter, the last 30 seconds of our blab. So now that's a benefit. That's, that's a definitely benefit. something that Hangouts didn't have. And I know that wasn't around when I first started using Blab, but that's that's getting more interactive, more back and you know, more kind of getting people involved in in the real time part of it. So that's kind of cool. So that okay, I'm going to go there right now, actually, to just since this is really the Blab, this is the Social Time TV on Blab, but it's all also about Blab, right? So we- let me go to what you just did and see okay. exactly if. You you told the truth, social media show. There we go. <laughs> Which you always tell the truth. Always, always. You're always honest with social social Greg. So okay. Yeah, they're definitely so using Twitter there. cards really well here. And uh okay. I can actually look right here at the last 30 second clip here. That's hilarious. So that's kind of neat, right? So that's how you could actually do a show, right? So if you have segments, you could just start each segment with that link, right? Sure. So so that's good. 
Except I might have used the wrong hashtag because I'm not seeing the uh, the last uh, tweet here, but that's okay. That's cool. Okay. I, but I have I, I have one in there already. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Facebook, you know, switching all around here, going back to Facebook, um, I think it, <laughs> it, it, it just goes to show you that, you know, they're not done innovating Facebook. And, and I think that's why Apple has made it so far and has done so well is, is continuing to innovate uh, new products and new ideas and new ways of doing things. No, sure, they don't all work. But when they do, uh, there's a huge reward. And so I think Facebook... Uh, for the haters out there or the people that are hard on them, I mean, they are, um, they're doing things, they're making things happen. And so that's, you know, that's how they're going to stay top of their game. And, um, you know, even by the next time we do this, I'm sure there'll be even more things uh, that Facebook uh, has to say. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's fascinating how they're expanding. It seems like they're they're run, they're thinking about things really strategically. Well, it, it goes to say, it goes without saying, you know, by adding some of these features that that you know aren't really thought through. Uh, you know, I don't know how they're getting their market research and their marketing research to develop which features are important. But it doesn't seem as as much of a shotgun approach like Google does, right? It's kind of it seems like it's very. Very well timed, almost Apple, like you said, Apple like, sure. um, you know, in terms of its introduction of features, um, and and VR, we know VR is going to come to this eventually. So, um, uh, uh, I, so I think that's another thing that we'll have to talk about one day is is VR on social, right? Sure. So, um, okay, uh, are we are we all. Uh, yeah, I don't, we, we don't want to uh, give Mark too much attention. Out. We don't want to give Mark too much attention. Well, Mark well, the, the, well yeah. Mark, Mark's going to get some more attention with his next okay. story. A little more for him. Uh, uh, Facebook rolls out enterprise version with Facebook at work. So that's now we're going full circle now. We Here just we talked about Slack. So now Facebook, uh, Facebook at the enterprise level is like Slack. <laughs> so again, right. let's go figure that one out. Well, yeah. So I mean... I guess do you are do you have access to Facebook at work, Greg? Do yeah, you? yeah, but I mean it's my normal account, right? So you know, what the way we do, I do it right, is that we have I have private pages that have uh, my development teams or project teams on it, right? I mean, I so you, you know it? it's yeah, it's more as conven- no, no, not not enterprise, but this is how I do it now, oh, okay. right? So so we have private groups, right? And then these private groups we collaborate, right? Now. What's kind of fascinating is what they're saying, and and I hear Facebook wants to kill private groups. Is that that's some of the rumor that's out there on on uh, on the media scape, right? Hmm. Um, media landscape is that they want to kill private groups. Now, if they introduce, see Facebook at work, essentially, there those two things could have the potential of competing because of the way that people are using it these days, right? So. I don't know that that that's kind of my thoughts on Facebook at work. I mean, it, I think it's kind of cool because I think everyone's been asking on how to, I guess, um, you know, how to create a social enterprise, right? I think that's that's some of the things, right? We hear, right, Sean? Sure, yeah, absolutely. You know, creating the creating the social enterprise, right? And and is, is Facebook at work the way to do that? No, well, could be. You're on Facebook already. A lot of us. At least a billion of us. <laughs> well, it reminds me of That's like the they... Yammer Tech concept, right? Where it's it's like a Facebook, mm-hmm. but only people from that particular project or company are on it, and so all the posting and communication back and forth is, you know, both social but also directed usually with some sort of uh, goal in mind. Um, for the project or what have you. And that's where I think Slack is doing really well is for that kind of uh, collaboration. And so it comes to no surprise to me, of no surprise that Facebook is expanding their uh, enterprise level services for for the Facebook type features. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's just another business unit they're going to create that's going to, you know, have potential to raise a lot of money. So... Ah, to Julie Kane. Ah, Julie Sully. Yay. Yeah. Awesome to see you. Yeah, so Julie's saying, so she hasn't heard about the group thing. Oh, yeah. Come on, Greg. Do you have any backup? Well, no, the, it's, it's, the pri- it's, the, it's, it's the private groups, oh, it's right? The private the public groups. groups. Oh, okay. Right, right. Oh, but right, so the they're ones, trying to transition. The ones, 
Right, right. I, and I think I think why is because it's going to compete with this Facebook at work because why do people create private groups all well, to collaborate, you know, and you, and it's not all about projects in which I think maybe the enterprise one, but um, yeah, that that would be, that'd be interesting. I mean, that's what I hear on the streets and the media side um, that they want to kill it, uh, at least the private group feature. Um, now, is that partly know. because you stow away on the Facebook buses there in San Francisco sometimes? Is that, is that how you're getting this inside? Yeah, I get on their Wi-Fi. I get on their Wi-Fi while I'm waiting for my bus to go downtown. Is this, is this how you're getting all this insider information? Yeah, I'm hacking. Yeah. I'm hacking. Hacking into the uh, Facebook uh, bu- the, uh, uh, wireless bu- bus as it passes me. <laughs> okay. Well, so. legal, not legal, creative, maybe? Creative is a good way yeah. to look at it. But you know, Julie brings up a good point: is that a lot of people use uh, private Facebook groups for their own forum for for paid online courses, which would just kill. Which means that you, it, they force them to go to this uh, Facebook at work thing, which or whatever. I mean, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I agree with Julie on that. I, I, th- I think if they killed it, it would piss off a lot of people. Piss off a lot of people, man. We don't want pissed off no, Facebook don't. people. <laughs> well, especially social media people, because they love to share that, right? So we, ah, love see, we love to talk, right? Julie, you know, Julie brings up an interesting point, another interesting, maybe LinkedIn groups fills that void. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, good. We could. I mean, that's, I mean, they, they've talked about being uh, more social as well, and they're trying to be. So. Yeah, they're, you know, talking about LinkedIn a little bit, you know, they're having a rough time. Uh, you know, their stock, their value has... Uh, has taken a huge hit. And, you know, a lot of these social networks, their evaluations do get bloated. But um, that's the, from a user standpoint, that's not really here nor there. But the longevity and the ability for them to continue to innovate and invest money does come down to their value on the stock market, right? And investments and investors and people that have, you know, millions of dollars at stake, right? So uh, from a user standpoint, um, LinkedIn is great for business. You know, there's still, it's still fantastic. Have they done anything lately that's gotten me really excited? Not really. I don't know about you, Greg, if you have seen anything or Julie, perhaps anything new. Um, all the my only on the downside is they keep changing how the images show up. So when you're trying to make the perfect like content marketing, right, which is a big part of what I do yeah. and Julie yeah. and all of us is you're trying to make that perfect post, right? You're trying to make the image just the right size or the link show up properly. And then when it's on the blog and it all ideally works perfect together, but a lot of these networks, the image size is different for mobile and for desktop and it's different for tablet or phone. And so when you're trying to make it friendly in every single environment, it becomes impossible. And LinkedIn is a great example where the mobile size that's ideal image size for mobile is totally different than for desktop. And so, yeah, that, if anything, they're frustrating me. They, I don't have much love at the moment, but hopefully they'll continue to innovate and, and bring us some more goodies in the next little bit. Yeah. You know, LinkedIn um, had a major acquisition last year, right? Um, Lin- Lynda.com, right? And I'm still trying to understand how they're going to, if they're going to integrate lynda.com into a little more educational enterprise. Have with you seen LinkedIn. anything about them? No, no. I think they're still operating as separate companies uh, for the most part. Um, we do on Nerdstalker, we do a couple of interviews with lynda.com um, each year. Um, try to get, you know, if we see some interesting courses that they're putting on, especially on the developer side or on the video side. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, it's very quiet there. I, I'm still trying to understand what they're trying to do with Lynda.com, but I mean, Lynda.com is, is huge and, you know, they'll, they'll, they can survive on their own. Obviously they've had for many years before LinkedIn bought them. So it should be, uh, should be okay. Um, oh, well, you can upload photos on the mobile LinkedIn app now. Oh, that's interesting. It helps. <laughs> it helps. Julie always a positive. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. You're right. That's true. <laughs> So what else do we want to jump onto here, buddy? What else? Have yeah, you let's got look on the, let's on go menu? on. Uh, well, yeah, so we so we let's 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 get 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 rid of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook for a little bit. Okay. And um, uh, okay, we already did that. Okay, let's talk about Snapchat. Uh, uh, since we had the Academy Awards here recently last year, I mean last week, um, Snapchat Live was big, right? You're telling me it was. You know, so for I, I don't know the exact. Hey, Greg, while I'm talking, can you see if what happens if you try to post text with a link? Did you try the same thing? 
because every time I post text, what we're doing yeah. for those of you watching now or the replay is we're putting all the links in the sidebar there so you can uh, check out what we're some reference of what we're chatting about. Uh, for me, uh, on Blab right now, every time I do that, it's just showing the link. So I'm not sure why that is or if that's just what I'm seeing. But jumping ahead, yeah, to Snapchat yeah, is, nice. I don't know if it's up to 10 second videos, but videos and pictures, short video and picture messaging that you can get really creative about and put emojis and text and coloring and there's just so much way to be creative about it. And big news networks, including things like CNN and sporting events. Oh, it worked for you. Um, you can actually watch their kind of Snapchat channel. So it's it's little mini pictures or little mini videos uh, all in a row. Well, for the first time at the Academy Awards, of course, Snapchat was being used all over, but one of the main, the highlights of it was that they put posted it to the web. So for the first time, as if I would happen to be on my desktop or laptop computer, if I clicked on the link, I could actually view the Snapchat on the web, which of course is a huge um, change in the sense that because it was mobile only. And so Flipboard did that not too long ago where Flipboard started, uh, which is Flipboard is a great app for uh, finding news and uh, uh, news and, you know, topics of any sort in any industry, really. And they started mobile. And recently now you have almost a lot of the same functionality on the web. So it's kind of neat to see where Snapchat is going with this, where they, it was live on the web. I haven't seen anything since then, but um, it was neat to be able to see the Snapchat. And the other thing it did is it wasn't the same person's Snapchat. So they were grabbing a whole bunch of different people's Snapchat that were at the awards and then put them all into a story that was maybe a couple minutes long or something like that, which you could view on the web. Um, and so that was a pretty cool innovation from Snapchat. That's pretty cool. No, I don't. I don't use Snapchat at all. You know, so it's interesting to see. You know the the genesis of this kind of like short form, you know, um, you know, in the moment, it's almost kind of like, you know, what I liken it to is basically um, live wall posts. Right. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Right. Because I think with, with social, it's been always this wave of things that just pass you and you just happen to be in that moment. You could capture that moment. Right. But with Snapchat now you could actually, you know, see what's going on real time and actually interact with it was kind Mm -hmm. of interesting. Right. So that's a big difference with Snapchat, I see. It's almost reminding me now of Twitter, where you've got um, how many ever seconds video to say whatever you want to say. And sure, you can do more than one video, just like you can do more than one tweet. But people that are using it in their business, and perhaps it's like a little tip or a little nugget of information, uh, you got to get it out in 10 seconds. Just like on Twitter, you've got to get it out in 140 characters. Um, And so I think that the short form of it, the brevity, is um, part of the attraction, the attraction to it. And again, yeah. depending, Snapchat is mostly known because the messages disappear. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to use it. So, um, every, you know, the best analogy is like sexting, right? It, it's the app lends itself, the app lends itself for that type of communication because <laughs> the messages, the pictures, the videos disappear. Well, almost disappear. I mean, now we're starting to talk. Well, are we, the best are part, we kidding? No, the best part about <laughs> it is it turns out. They really disappear. Yeah, yeah. They just don't show up on your mobile space. They, it's, they, it's in the cloud. They disappear on your phone. But yeah, that's the whole thing. So it turns out if you're if you're smart enough or there was some next level hacking going on is that it was actually able, there was sort of some remnants of those images or videos stored. And some people kind of, I don't know if they fixed that or not, but in theory, in theory, Greg, I don't own Snapchat. Why am I getting in trouble? No, I'm just joking. Um, is that it's great because it disappears, so there's no evidence, right? If I were to text you something, it would stay there. Where Snapchat, uh, you can set it between probably, I think, one and 10 seconds, somewhere in there, uh, and then it's gone. That being said, I can also do more of like a public thing where I keep adding snaps to my story, and it becomes a... Um, you know, a series of snaps all together. And that stays, I think, for 24 hours. So it depends why you're using it. But um, regardless of the actual app itself, short form communication is certainly not going anywhere from emojis to Twitter to short video messaging. I think that's something to definitely keep on our radar. Yeah, no, thank you. That uh, that was a great explanation of Snapchat. It it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, 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 
it, it was like I said, it's, it's it's this kind of way of of, of kind of making your your timeline um, usable, right? In real time, so I thought that was kind of cool. But but I mean, I mean, let's let's shift to the other side of video, uh, real time, right? Let's, let's shift away for Snapchat and go to Meerkat or or Periscope. But you now we're obviously we're doing this on Blab, right? right. So so I read recently, you know, Meerkat is having a tough time monetizing. Yes, tough time, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, Sean. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? Well, you know, they. So this week, I guess in the last couple of days, the tech blocks have kind of tech blogs have kind of blown up a bit about Meerkat and the changes going on. And they had an interesting journey because they were really one of the first people to pioneer the live streaming. And really, the only difference between this and Meerkat initially was that Meerkat is one person, so you couldn't have. Whereas on Vlad, you can have up to four. Uh, it was one person, and and they really were the first person to hit the ground running. And you can say, okay, fine. What about Hangouts? But here's the big thing that doesn't come a lot up a lot, and it, you still can't do this, is that you can't start a on air at Hangout, which means that it's totally public and live from your mobile device for Google. And that's the one thing that Meerkat got right is that anybody with a smartphone could start a live stream right from their simply from their smartphone oh, uh, yeah. on LTE or Wi-Fi. And that obviously for adoption is huge, especially because some of the most interesting things that we share are us out in the world and experiencing our friends or our environment. And Google Hangouts just never lent itself. I actually tried to start Hangouts. I go down to the water. I try to connect with you. And I think you can actually jump onto one, but you can't actually start one. And so therefore, and whether or not that worked well or not, I'm not really not certain. I kind of got tired of trying. But Meerkat was the first person to get that right. Twitter let them access their API, I think, for like a week or two. And it was all about South or Southwest. And so they got a ton of users really quick because you could find your friends through Twitter on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not sure the timeline exactly with Periscope. But as soon as Twitter bought Periscope and launched it as their own, then they cut off Meerkat's access to their API, which obviously substantially hurt them. Meerkat was neck and neck with Periscope for quite some time there, um, but because of the Twitter functionality and who knows some other, you know, I'm sure some interesting factors as well, that really put them at a disadvantage, even though they were one of the pioneers of the technology itself. So Meerkat just can't keep up with Periscope. They can't keep up with Blab. So now it looks like they're shiving, you know, they're shifting again to something that works for them. It sounds more like a Snapchat type uh, video network. Yeah. Um, but what that looks like and how, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's going to be quite like Snapchat. It's not going to be quite like Periscope, but um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. And I think that that lends itself to another topic altogether for one of our next social time TVs is startups pivoting and pivoting fast enough in order to make your app relevant before you lose all your users and or all your revenue and you're, you're out of the game. So I think Meerkat has rolled with the punches extremely well. And so I'd be very optimistic that they will uh, that they'll find a way to uh, stay relevant. Well, in, in the article, right, it says, uh, it's, it's, you know, they said, uh, you know, they were credited for starting this kind of, you know, uh, online online chat. Uh, you know, video chat, you know, thing with just, you know, following a person, right? So, you know, a lot of celebrities, um, you know, ended up getting on there, but um, they're going to move away from the open public live streaming, right? Totally move away, which made them famous, as you just pointed out, and focus on other video centric social networking features like you just alluded to, which would be like Snapchat or something like that. So, um, you know, live, you know, and, and we haven't even touched about the live video, that article that came out about Facebook, right? Going live, right? Oh, yeah. Um, well, see, Mark, though, I, I hesitate. Mark, he's getting so much attention with Facebook tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Have you got that access to the Facebook Live? No, not yet. But, but. They said they're going to make make it available soon, right? So that's just a that's just another acknowledgement coming from the big gorilla in the house right. that that live video is 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 the way to go, right? But like, you know, is copying someone else? I mean, not you know, not Facebook. Facebook could do whatever the freaking heck they want, yeah. but but you know, Meerkat going to copy someone else is that a way to actually you know keep on staying afloat and 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 uh, 
being relevant. I, I don't know. You know, it seems like differentiating is better than copying, but I don't know. Yeah, it has to be totally different for me to really kind of jump on that. I mean, because it goes out to the same, you know, this conversation is the same conversation we had when we first launched Social Time TV, right? How many social networks can a person really <laughs> pay attention to? Sure, yeah. Right, right. Um, I don't know, you know. And we tried, you know, we tried to get everyone on everything and myself, you know, as a social media uh, player, so to speak, and marketer, uh, it's important to learn them all. And initially, I still, even though I realized that specialization and niche was important, still tried to stretch thinking more was better. More social networks was better, more reach. But really, it comes down to the same thing is it's about quality and how you're leveraging that social network. If you do a great job, one is going to serve you so much better than two, three, five, ten. if you do a great job at one. Now, mm. you can easily listen on the other networks if someone's trying to talk to you for lead generation and stuff like that, but actually really putting a solid effort in, there's only so much time. And so I think that if anything, what we've learned is that um, uh, less is more and, and focusing on those. And so um, with Facebook Live, can you see yourself doing more of that, Greg? Live streaming right um, to Facebook well, for all your no, friends to no, see you no, and your no, business? I, 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 no, I, I think what it help gives people like us who's trying to create a show another option, right? It's another Google Hangout. It's a, it's a, you know, it's another way. You know, in the older days, it would be UStream, right, or live stream, sure, right. right? Do you remember those right. days? Yeah, well, uh, uh, SF New Tech <laughs> yeah, when you did the show and we used to do the twittering. Uh, mm -hmm. You were it was all was it UStream or live stream mostly you were using. You stream, you stream, you stream. And, 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 you know, we've gone totally away from, you know, live streaming because it doesn't make a difference really anymore. You know, it's all about post views, right? right? Cause, cause again, the problem that we have, right. Is, is that uh, how do you rise above this noise level that continues starting to rise because of all the social networks? You're, you're right. Maybe focusing on one is better than focusing on many, you know, um, I, you know, when there were only three relevant ones like Twitter, Facebook, and, you know, maybe you could make the argument Instagram when it was separate from Facebook. Right. Um, well, it still is love relevant, but um, I think that, I think that's, that's the problem we, we're all facing as marketers is how do you r rise above this noise level still? And it's getting harder. Um, and, and so a lot of these, a lot of these, um, you know, brands are trying to figure that out finally. You know, we're yeah. really going to have to have Julie on the show because she points out here, um, and thank you for that. I don't feel so bad about giving Mark so much attention now, is that Facebook is making these moves. <laughs> Look, we got live video, Facebook search, which they keep promising to get better, and I think hopefully they're going to nail it this time. I've been waiting for that one too, Julie. Um, the new reactions, uh, which Greg and mm -hmm. I were just talking about last night. Um, can I can I tell the the, the our huge Go fan base real quick? Please so, share. So there's Please. a way that you can change your reactions. So right now, what is it like? Love, ha ha, or what have you? Great, right? That's kind of what goes sad, angry. Oh, uh, well, yeah, and if you're social media, Sean, he'll put the Trump like in there. So <laughs> what you can do, although your friends don't see it, is you can switch it so that it changes the icon to um, your favorite like Disney character. There's about 10 or 20 of them so far. And of course there's a uh, Donald Trump. So if you're a big Trump fan, then it's got like these crazy faces for like or for wow. And so I was using it purely as an amusement tool to uh, bug my good friend Greg here. But unfortunately on his end, he just sees it as a regular reaction. It's only for me on my Facebook that it shows up with a different uh, icon or Litecon or whatever. Um, so that's too bad, but it's kind of, it would be kind of fun. The other one, which was neat is uh, our prime minister is one of the, the first ones that came out, uh, Justin Trudeau. And so if you have a friend who doesn't like Justin Trudeau, it's kind of thought it'd be a great way to like his articles as Justin Trudeau. But again, it's not quite there where they're not seeing it on there. And I just get to stare at, it just pops up with all his face instead of the heart and the smile. So jumping back to the other parts, so reactions, right, with the like button, instant articles. Have you seen those yet, Greg? No, no. Tell me, so tell me in, more. So instant articles, have you noticed that when you click on a blog post or to a website, part of the downside is that on mobile, I don't know if it's worse on mobile or desktop, but there's that extra step where it lags, where you're waiting mm -hmm. for that URL to redirect whenever you click off from Facebook. 
Like for example, if you click from Google to an article or a website so much faster than if you do it from within Facebook itself. And so that was kept causing um, click throughs, right? People give up right off the bat. They'll just click back if it doesn't happen or touch yeah. back, I guess, right off the bat. And yeah. so uh, that content is now hosted within Facebook. So it doesn't have to leave Facebook and it shows up just like an article with pictures, images and everything. And so that mm. way publishers are able to uh, solve that problem. And also there are some monetization opportunities within that as well uh, for ads and so forth. So um, that's another huge move they made in the marketing. And what else did, uh, with email sign up? Okay, that's another big one to talk about. Julie, probably know more. We're really, I guess we're just gonna have to get Julie on the show, aren't we here, Greg? I, I, I uh, love to have Julie on. Yeah, we, if we have to, we'll pressure her into it, whatever it takes. Uh, public shaming, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Canvas ad types, yeah, those are cool too. Yeah, thanks, Julie, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we could have called it the Facebook Snapchat show, but you know. No, no, I, I, but but this is relevant. Uh, this is the state of social it is today, right? Uh, and that's what we're talking about in Social Time TV is the state of social. Sure. Um, the, I, I, I mean, you know, she brought up a good point. Search has always been clunky. <laughs> Not still always has been, you know, how you want to look at it. Um, I don't, I mean, it was so funny when I used to go search using the search tool in Facebook. I, I think what they were collaborating with um, with Microsoft Search, right? Um, for the longest time, and it was just terrible. I mean, oh, when it, when it, when it had that whole page, and then at the bottom it had the yeah, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, terrible. Yeah, I mean, terrible. you know, yeah. you know, and I, I gave up on search. I, I I wouldn't even consider any kind of search unless I'm searching for a brand on on Facebook. You know, right, I, right. I mean. You know, but as far as informational search, I, I, I use Google. I mean, that's, you know, so yeah, Bing. That's right. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, Julie. Bing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I, I, it's like I blanked that whole nightmare out of my mind. You know, Bing, Bing search. Oh, my God. Um, well, the yeah. social graph is where it could be huge, right? If I want to find information that my friends have shared on Facebook, because we always trust information shared by someone we know, like, and trust, right? So if I can get to that on Facebook, not just Google, but I can get to what's the best restaurant in Victoria or the coffee shop or best way to do this or that, and you've shared an article that you or a comment or whatever on your Facebook, and it can really... Uh, properly tap into that social graph and content. Mm -hmm. Now we're, we're talking and that where Google plus is starting to get it is that if I'm logged into Google plus and I do a search on my google.com search that, so for example, Greg, cause we're a connection on Google plus is that if you posted something about Japan and things to know before you travel to Japan and you post an article about that, you're most likely going to show up in my search results. And so that's, there's a lot mm -hmm. of, value uh, in the recommendation. And so if Facebook can nail that part of the search as well, then, you know, sure, privacy, <laughs> right? So if you've made some random rant about some restaurant or coffee shop, right? And then all of a sudden I'm searching that and I'm like, just met you or something. I'm like, okay, whoa, this, okay. Yeah, I'm strong. You know, wow, well, yeah. I, I guess here's, here's the question. Um, Facebook is good at social, Google's good at search. Right, and each of them has tried to play each other's game. You know, the space we're going to get it. That's the here we go, live and center, Greg. Are they going to get it this time? Well, or get it, or get search. is it going to is it going to finally force them to partner with Google eventually? Oh, again, right? They were right. doing it before. The, the, right, the Facebook yeah, results right. were showing up in Google searches. Yeah. There was an open, there was saying, a communication yeah. there. Yeah, there was a pipeline. Right. Yeah. Right, and so uh, you know, even though they're competing with one another. Is it really better the partnership better than the divorce? <laughs> Say that again. The is the partnership better than the divorce? You yeah. know, for Facebook, or, and you know, and divorces are messy, right? Well, it can be, it can be, yeah. you know, it can be unless you have all the money and power. It's never fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's never fun. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, we're speaking from. Uh, Personal experience, of course. I'm going to give you some uh, props. Do you see these lab props? Yeah, right? I said that. Yeah. Did yeah. you give me? Did, did you give me any? Just out of curiosity, yet? I think I did earlier, okay. but I'll give you some more. Well, it's instant approval, right? You know, that's what it's all about—is approval these days. So if I can get a props, then I know. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> yeah, I measure my whole life existence because of the uh, the numbers and props. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. props, likes, plus ones, whatever it takes. You know, I'm willing to. I'm not picky, and uh, and uh, it'll keep me on Blab longer. Sorry. I didn't get props on Google Plus, so there you go. I'm more balanced than that, Sean. Oh, are you okay? Definitely well, more deeper than uh, well. not as shallow. Hey, judge me, if, judge me well. At least I'm on. No, <laughs> just teasing. The, what do they call it? The like generation or something like that? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Julie brings up a good point. They probably won't partner with Google. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see that. It would take really. a lot. It would take a lot. Yeah, you know. Um, it would I be mean, neat to see, though, if the AI, and we could just set it up as a scenario to see what would happen if they did, and to run the billions of, of, uh, well, of ways it would turn out. I mean, case in point um, is uh, video on Facebook, right? Uh, why, why do you think they're going live? Because, you know, they noticed that the data on video uh viewing on facebook i think i read somewhere is is really high i mean and so we love video as marketers uploaded natively to facebook not a youtube video but right up to facebook we love yeah. that. definitely gives yeah. us an advantage always yeah so so i guess here here's a question for you sean uh, about live uh chats like this you know you could call it a show you could call it just guys chatting just like us blabbing away would you rather do it on blab or you'd rather do it on Facebook Live. Well, with I, I, yeah, you know, the thing is, is like, so Facebook being kind of one person still. So if I were to have to compete against, you know, if I were to compare that with like Periscope or Meerkat, the thing that Facebook automatically gets is the audience because you already have all these connections where when you're starting per Periscope or Meerkat or what have you, you're starting from scratch. Even if you do connect with your current network, whereas on Facebook, I've got this instant network and they're also... And again, I'm not sure what it's going to like be for everybody, but we get notifications like Mari Smith uh, went live the other day and I got a notification. Mari Smith is now live. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty powerful. And so for me, even if I liked Periscope better, yeah, I would definitely be be uh, persuaded to to use Facebook. Even if I fundamentally dislike them, I would still be be uh, be. Right, right. Okay. So, so so devil's advocate question I'm gonna ask you. Social media Sean, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot, buddy. Stopping this. So right so, now. so if you had a Click. million people so if you had a million people on Blab okay. and you wanted to and it's called the Social Time TV show. Okay. And you have the choice of going to so Facebook Live, what would you do? Would you and, and you know they don't syndicate each other. Okay. They don't so the, they don't exact, share. So the exact same audience? Well, just say that you have a brand. I mean, I was it's like if I said that you you were, uh, you know, General Mills or something like that, right? I mean, that's just what that's kind of the question I'm asking, right? Would you move your brand to Facebook Live just because of what you just said? Oh, I see. Uh, if I was a brand, absolutely, uh, for sure. You know, if I was a blogger or a personality and I had some other, you know, invested interests or um, because of the flavor or culture, you know, the culture and the community in Blab is different than the other networks as well. So we haven't done any social time TVs on Blab yet, but I've certainly been an audience member um, and watched a gazillion of them. And it's definitely more uh, collaborative. You know, it's very collaborative in the sense that there's that community feel. I can't, I don't know if you know, but remember way back when there was group live chatting before this type of technology where it was this good of quality. But years ago, you couldn't mm. really do this kind of mm. stuff. It just wasn't very popular and the quality and the, there was no Twitter integrate, you know, nothing like that. Um, and so there is something to be said about flavor and authenticity, but uh, if I'm a brand or if I'm for profit in any way, it's going to, it would be pretty tough to not do whatever gets me the biggest audience. Now, now to support the idea of the chat rooms, if we're going to go down that rat hole now, okay, here we go. You know, what I liked about the chat rooms though, is that I guess it's like any other area, right? Where, where you want to find a focused uh, view on something, right? The chat rooms are great because you could read through some of the ones that were interesting to you and actually absorb it with this kind of like fast live stuff. Um, you know, of course, you know, Julie's on here. So I'm, I'm focusing on what Julie's saying because I know Julie or, you know, whatever. But let's say you had 100 people on there and this thing is just like going like gangbusters through there, right? It's like water, right? Under right. a bridge, right? right. 
I don't know if I could absorb all that live chat stuff, you know, as, as a host, like what we're doing um, in real time. You know, it's just I happen to be, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention to talking Ooh, to you, but question. I'm seeing yeah, this yeah. thing, open, right? I, I don't know. It's a, it, I, it, it begs the question. Um, you know, sometimes some of those chat rooms are better if informationally than, than just having like a conversation like, like we're having, like mm-hmm. if we were in a coffee shop together or something like that, right? Yeah, there is certainly something to be said about uh, chatting and video chatting and your Twitter and your Facebook and your notif- you know, and all going off. I think with Blab and, and these live streaming platforms, I think in a perfect world too, is that where it's great is that, you know, where we have a co-host here is to have the more people where some, you know, you can either take turns or everyone kind of uh, has a chance to do some talking, to ask questions, but then also to interact with the other people that are chatting as well. And whether you address it live like we are, you know, mentioning, oh, thanks, Julia, or that's an interesting comment, is to even just chat with them in the comments. Because mm. all of this craziness and noise, if it if we start losing out on the conversation and we lose and we get distracted, which is hard not to, then now we're losing, you know, the best part of this live streaming, which is being able to actually connect and engage in real time that, with people that we actually care about what they say. Right. So right. now you've really no. taken me first yeah. in there on that one, Greg. Of course. I, I always yeah. tweak you, social media, Sean. I tweak your but- buttons. Tweak your buttons. <laughs> <laughs> How's our time doing? Are we getting there? What if, how, yeah, I think how we, we yeah, I, mean, I think we're about burnt down. I mean, you know, so, but but I mean, you know, the, to those people who just joined, you know, this is Social Time TV. We usually do this on um, Google Hangouts, and we wanted to try Blab for the first time, and and I've kind of enjoyed it. Um, you know, would I do this for my Merge Soccer videos? Um, that have a lot of videos on, you know, I have 400 plus videos on YouTube. Mm, I'm not sure I'd do an interview this way, but if it's just a chat talking about topics like we do on social time TV, I'd do it again. What about you, Sean? Uh, I think it's worth our time. You know, the other thing too, is if we put a little bit of uh, energy into it, we can, you know, we can set it up ahead of time in a sense, like set a, an event and do a little bit of promotion um, invite, you know, because the other thing too, is this, it's just so much easier to use Blab than Google Hangouts as well. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. All you have to do is hit call in, you're in Mike, bam. Although that being said, settings wise, it isn't necessarily, but it, it is isn't easier to just join in the conversation. It's it, the barrier to entry is definitely less. That being said, the production mm-hmm. quality isn't, isn't on par. I think we're maybe getting 480 video right mm-hmm. now, 480p. Whereas that was one of the neat things that Google Hangouts did in the last upgrade, we might be going back six or 12 months now though, was they went up to 720p, the HD, what people call HD video. And so that makes a big difference too. Um, But as for the production quality, Blab isn't quite there. That being said, if you're doing an interview and you have people joining in and asking good questions, then maybe it's worth the sacrifice in production quality to have the more community. And well, I, okay, so yeah, so we have two people on, so that uh, I'm going to assume that it tiles down when you add four, you know, three, four, exactly, whatever, yeah. it tiles down, right? Now, does it resize? Like, if you have nine, and then our 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 our, our window goes size. down to. It's so just two you have squares. to you have to scroll you have to scroll you have to scroll down to get the other people on. Though, no, it fits right? us all in. Right. It probably okay. depends how zoomed in you are on your browser. Uh, Because every browser is going to be slightly different, right? Um, But for me, it's just would add basically, I've got space under us right now, and it would add just another two squares uh, under us. Um, But yeah, no, I mean, it's just a different flavor. Um, Should we commit to doing trying it again? Sure. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I mean, I mean, it's okay. I mean, I like talking to you either way. <laughs> Facebook Live, yes. Google Hangouts, yeah. or Blab.io. Awesome, it's okay. Awesome. Yeah. But I, yeah, thanks to Julie for a lot of her comments. That was really insightful. Cool. So I appreciate that. Yeah, well, we tried good. to, we have, I tried to get her on the Hangouts before, um, but it just wasn't as easy to look how easy it was for her to engage, right? And so um, if it meant that, uh, you know, it's easier to participate, then that's just right off the bat as a huge selling point for me. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, either having Julie on the sidebar here or having her in, in our window, whatever. I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take either one. You right, know, Julie? and we've, yeah, right. And we've also obviously got a lot to learn, you know, about tweaking this and so forth. But I definitely think it's worth the energy. And hey, even if we shift back and forth, we can still upload this video to YouTube. So if you're not following, uh, Social Time TV or Nerd Stalker on YouTube, because um, we'll probably do that, right? Probably upload it. 
most likely, depending on the quality, we'll see how it turned out. Um, then um, that's another way to follow us. But um, we shall see if you know well, what the demand is there. I'm going to embed this on the Nerd Soccer blog um, and see exactly what it looks like embedded and cool. just take a look at it and, um, you know, and uh, write an article about it this week and Great. we'll share it again through Twitter. Cause I want to talk to you the next, next time we talk, I want to, you know, we're talking about chats, you know, you know, the, the, the hashtag Twitter chats, right. I want to talk about that next time too cool. and see awesome. how relevant those are. Cause that has a lot of social interaction, but it's all sure. text-based, right not live video based like we're doing right now. So, cool. okay. So, uh, all right, let's sign off. This is Greg, <laughs> social Greg for, for the nerd stalker media network where we believe in tech startups design and you and Sean, and you've got Sean Charles, you? social media, Sean, uh, Twitter is a great spot for me at social media, Sean, uh, social media, Sean at gmail.com. If you want to fire me an email, um, and uh, pretty much all the social networks. So you can find me or yeah. we can connect there somewhere for sure. All right, man. I well, love talking to you. Thanks, tonight, buddy. Right? Yeah, right. great time. We're yeah. glad we did this on the blab as a yeah. as a fun time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it again. Cool. All right. Thanks, Take buddy. Care. Bye. Thanks, buddy. See you guys.